We are live. This is the market update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. Solana to 400 by June of 2024. Anyone interested in that? How about Avalanche to 28? Want to see the charts? Want to see short-term and long-term price predictions for what could happen with altcoins? Stay tuned. If you need a roadmap in crypto, subscribe to this channel. Turn on alerts so you know when we're going live. And if the content works for you, hit the like button. Okay. Let's welcome who's on the stream. Julio hits it first. I need a nap. Bull Runner, James Stewart, Richard Barry, and Augusta. Shizzy took profits. Nothing wrong with that. Ahmed says hello. Richard Barry giving me some love for the call. Right? We have somebody coming in from my Nigeria. Welcome. Right? Robert is here. Aaron, we're bringing Greenland to us. Oh, man. GLDN and Bark haters, may God have mercy on you because I won't. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Lotmo Crypto, Justin Romney's, Joe Mike, Driftless, Wisconsin, Zach, Rugby Performance Labs, right? Zane. Carpe Diem, Kenneth, what's up? Mr. Moby Dix, Aruna, welcome to the show. Ahmed, Kerry from Toronto, Ocho is here. Jason, yeah. Maven9472 said the crystal ball in your back room is working. Sleazy Minx in the house from Canada, welcome. Matthias. Okay, let's do it. News. Charlie Munger says, I'm not proud of my country for allowing this crypto, you know what? Wow. Charlie Munger is a really old guy, older than Warren, Warren Buffett. And the extent of the revulsion in crypto is so extreme, so extreme that somebody is no longer proud of their country. As long as you see headlines like this, the market is going up, in my opinion. Okay. As soon as you see, oh my God, I've made so much money. And like in 2017, everyone is getting hilariously rich except you. Okay. That's when you get out. When people are leaving the United States because we like crypto, Time to go. Luxury Swiss watches still beat stocks in crypto despite Rolex collapse. Wouldn't you know that Emerging Assets Group, which is the new name for the gold retriever ecosystem, has a division called Block 47, where major jewelry and volume from New York's Diamond District and Jewelry District on 47th Street will go on chain. And revenue from that enterprise in Emerging Assets Group will be used to, or part of it will be used to, buy back GLDN. And this doesn't say anything about water, which we will get into. We will get into it. Artificial intelligence is akin to crypto in 2021, as the sector is in facing investor hype says founder of tech investment firm and yours truly. Not saying AI is a bad trade, but if you're buying AI now, you're buying it from somebody who invested in it two years ago. Okay. Crypto is the thing that everybody is sitting on their hands because Web3 and the metaverse will be how AI manifests itself going forward. Right? In other words, how do you monetize AI? Well, not with $20 subscriptions to chat GPT. You monetize it with e-commerce in the metaverse. Okay. I'm pretty sure somewhere in here, right. Elon, are you singularity? Don't be lonely. Find a date. Okay. This is tongue in cheek about Tesla robots. Okay. AI robotics will be about the internet and e-commerce experienced in a different way. How are you going to pay your way in this world? With 
crypto. Meanwhile, Kathy R continues to relentlessly buy Coinbase. Okay, yes, I know we feature this. This is not exactly fresh news, but Kathy Wood continues to buy it. Momentum investors. <laughs> you know what equity investors love to do? They love to buy high and sell higher. They never mind committing the cardinal sin of crypto, of FOMOing in everybody at the top. They're just like, let's buy breakouts. Let's buy it when it's up. Wyoming passes a law to prevent forced disclosure of private keys. Thank God someone is on our side. Thank God. Elon Musk answers why he bought Twitter. Okay, so here he is at a big conference. And one of the things he said was that he bought Twitter because he wanted a, a platform that didn't impose fringe ideologies. Okay, that stands to reason. But he also said he did it for the benefit of humanity. Now, let me ask you a funny question. What's the difference between me and Elon Musk other than the money? We both share the same philosophy, right? With Musk and me, it's free speech. Probably with Musk and me, it's also with crypto. It's financial freedom, right? We're put here to connect with each other, not fight with each other. We're put here to be connected, to be free. And what is more free than crypto? What, what is more a beacon of freedom? Well, he said Twitter and I say crypto. Now, so I work for a company called Emerging Asset Group, formerly Gold Retriever. And we have a subsidiary called Blue Arctic. And this is a report by an analyst I helped bring in to another company who's now working with us. And this is a report for the Blue Arctic Group on the impact on the U.S. water sources from this disaster. Okay. Now, you might be like, well, gee, Bill, that's nice, but I don't really understand it. Well, I'll explain it to you. So GLDN is, I own this token and Bark. GLDN is the native token of the ecosystem. If you want to buy water, you got to own GLDN. GLDN pays you a reward in PAX Gold. So as you can see here, when GLDN is below the bottom Bollinger Band on the four-hour chart, um, it's, been, it's been a low. And then what you have to be careful of, you have to be careful of spikes followed by ugly reversal candles. But when it trends up, it kind of hugs that top Bollinger Band. So this is the native token. So if you're on Uniswap and you want water or bark, you have to have GLDN first. Remember, for emerging asset groups, when there's revenue, they will be used or part of that revenue will be used to buy back these tokens. Bark, water, right? Riding this trend. Now, a lot of people have said to me, well, Bill, how do you get the water out of Greenland? Like, how does that work? Well, on a Twitter space today, which you can see on my Twitter, our point man in Greenland went, th went through the trouble, not the trouble, but, you know, he took the time to explain to us that there's a giant blue lake. Okay. A giant blue lake. A giant blue lake. That... Kind of like a gas station. They're going to pool it and pump it into big ships. And you know what? Uncle Sam's going to get involved because Uncle Sam's army and Uncle Sam's people need the water. This is not just about water. It's about national security, and it's about the private sector helping the public sector and the people get the water that they need, particularly after a disaster. Now, again, this is not investment advice. I own this token. I work for the company. I have GLDN fully disclaimed. So let me ask you something. Let me just ask you a quick question. The total market cap approximately of emerging asset group is $14 million. 
Is the solution to getting drinking water to people impacted by this worth $14 million like over or under? So people look at this token and they go, well, I don't know. It's at 82 cents. You know, it used to be at a, it used to be at a dollar or it used to be actually much higher. And everyone's like, gee, I missed crypto. I saw a lot of tweets like, oh, I missed it. Really? $14 million for a solution to the United States losing 10% of our water supply. And let's just go to my Twitter to drive the point home. Okay. Right here on my Twitter. Okay. Wall Street Web 3. Okay. We do this every week, twice a week. Right here. This, this stream was almost like a podcast with the guy for, we have in Greenland explaining to you how the water gets out. Don't take my word for it. Go listen to him. Okay. Because water, right? As I understand it, the president of the United States in 30 minutes is going to be talking to us about UFOs. When I don't know if he's really explaining about the train derailments, hopefully that's included in the talk. In either case, this is the news. Okay. Let's wrap that up. Okay. Wrong again says, what is the ideal ratio of bark to GLDN to and other tokens? Okay. I actually don't know. Right. <clears throat> I, I just know that bark is a wrapped version of, of GLDN, I believe. Right. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Okay. Jason Mack is here. Croatia in the house. Right. Jason Mack. Right. Shout out to SoCal and the XRP army. Don't ask six from Oklahoma is here. Right. Baby whale is in the house. Right. Grill eight filibuster is here. Wrong again is in the house. Wrong again. I got PowerPoint for you today, buddy. Crypto Jedi from Chicago. Right on. Right on. Bubba Smith is back. JCH. Sephro from down under. Up early. AZ, welcome. Nick. Double AM. Joseph from Brazil. Yeah, another train in Michigan, according to Robert. Justin is like, hit the like button. Yeah, actually, hit the like button. Hit the like button. A lot of people are like, hey, Bill, what's your next big altcoin pick? I just gave it to you. I just gave it to you. PowerPoint. Altcoin price predictions. You thought I forgot. Shame on you. Okay, let's kick it. Ethereum expanding triangle. Okay, first I thought this was an accumulation cone and I got hosed on that. No problem. Then when I draw this, I'm like, oh my God. By dropping the market lower, they made it more bullish. Let me say that again. By dropping the market lower, they made it more bullish when they dropped it to 1500. Check the GAN support at 1500 on my Twitter. Oh my God. Right? Sometimes, you know, people ask me, hey, Bill, where do you get all your conviction from? Well, it's from those hand kept GAN charts. In any case, expanding triangles are hugely bullish. And I got a lot of lessons about expanding triangles when I worked in equities. Okay. Back in 2009, this is how the market would go up when there was QE. And you're like, wait a minute, Bill, there's no QE now. Yeah, but everybody's got to come out of stable coins. I was looking up market caps today for like Circle and Tether, like tens of billions of dollars. They're coming out of that stuff. They're coming out. They're going into Bitcoin. They're going into Ethereum. Ethereum hits 1720 and keeps going. Like I said on my Twitter, you have 2,000. S&P, here it is. Here's the expanding trial from 2009. This was the end of the great financial crisis. It was exactly, it felt exactly like the apocalyptic feeling in December off FTX. Initial rally, expanding triangle, basically stair step higher. Ethereum long-term price prediction. Using Fibonacci ranges, and Fibonacci time sequences. So this is a log chart. I connected the 2017 high, the COVID low, and the 2021 highs. 
to project out what an upward sloping range would look like. I did some of this on live TA, but you know, I'm bringing it into the PowerPoint. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to say, all right, if ETH is on an uptrend, where would it go and when would it get there? And I use time and price to try to figure that out. Now, if you want to watch more about this, we have a Bitcoin price prediction video where I actually, you know, went through this and I actually did it yesterday online for Cardano. So Cardano, I got $3 by, I think, the end of the year. In this case, for Ethereum, I get 7K by 2024. By May of 2024, which is like, you know, where we would start the halving trade. And then ironically, I get a much higher price by 2028, but not much. So if you want to get while well, the getting's good, I think it's between now and 2024 in ETH. Okay, again, this was Gold Retriever, right? Hitting the bottom Bollinger Band and riding the top Bollinger Band. Okay, Bark, same thing. As long as you don't get some grotesque FOMO up and then reversal, I'm okay with this. Right? I was talking to my boss before we got on the air. He said, you know what? Not a lot of people know about this. That's good and not good. It's good because when people figure this out, Altcoin price predictions. Again, I own both tokens and I work there. Total three, keeping on this altcoin price prediction thesis. Now, this is a GAN structure, okay, that I drew on total three. And total three has been banging on this purple line for quite a while, right? All of last year and this year. And this to me looks like altcoins are about to move. I got a great idea. Let's stop thinking about altcoins as S coins. Like everyone says altcoins and they think they think the casino. Let's change that narrative. Let's drop that. Let's go altcoins are tech stocks. Altcoins are web3. Amazon partnering with Avalanche, the Solana phone right? ETH dramatically underpriced. All anybody wants to talk about is the Shanghai upgrade or the Shanghai uh, event where people unstake their ETH. What possible reason is there to sell ETH at these prices? I have no idea. The 2017 high was 1400. I don't even think you talk about taking profits on ETH until 2500. Tactically, I think it's 2000. And I think that's sooner rather than later. Okay. Galaxy Digital been asked about this a couple times, right? This could be a complex head and shoulders, meaning shoulder, shoulder, head, head, shoulder, shoulder. Okay, somewhat, somewhat symmetrical, a little bit outside the box. It's got to break out probably above $5 before you can get really excited. But I don't know who's given up on crypto hedge funds. This is Mike Novogratz. Bitcoin miners have been smoking higher lately, but this chart still shows doubt. Like Bitcoin miners got destroyed because everybody thought that they were going under like 2018. This to me still shows there's lingering bearishness in crypto. Okay. Utah is in the house. Zach, welcome. Welcome. S&P, two-day chart. Sitting up here, perched on resistance below a trend line. The Williams oscillator says there's going to be a big move. Now, for all my bluster, there is a solar storm tonight, which can be known, which can, according to chat GPT, create anxiety in humans. So if the solar storm passes and ETH does not go down, and you still have this thing hovering at 1720, I think you're going to wake up Saturday or Sunday and ETH is going to be gone if there's no dip tomorrow. And if there's a sideways move tomorrow, that is the dip. So if we're heading into like an astronomical anxiety period and crypto doesn't go down, you got your answer as to what's going to happen next. Okay, Solana, long-term price prediction. I connected the inception of Solana to the high in 2021 to the FTX low, okay? And that projects a range up. And then I drew a time stamp, if you will. 
starting from Solana inception. And I hit it right at the 2021 top, projected it out. Interesting that it gave me the FTX low. In other words, I did not draw that. I connected this point and this point, and the FIB time sequence expands out from there. So what would you think if this thing showed an intersection between two lines on a two-week Solana chart for June of 2024 for Solana at 440? Now, is that theoretical? Yes. Will people throw popcorn at me? Probably. Should people start thinking about how high this can all go big picture? In other words, what happens if this is up only in altcoins until August? Like what happens if it's Bitcoin to 27 and then altcoins up only for a couple of months? Now, Solana at 440 in June of 2024. Yes, that's rather lofty, but not ridiculous. When Solana was at 10, I was talking 30. So why when we're at 30, can we not talk 200? Like, why can't this go back to its high? Cardano can go back to its high. Matic. Now, tech, from a technical analysis point of view, Matic is breaking out of a big diagonal structure, right? It's basically at resistance at $1.45. It's up 10%. I recently had an experience on Matic trying to do NFTs. Um, I would take the money and put it somewhere else. You made money on this, ring the register. You bought it at 60 cents and it's at $1.45. Not investment advice, but find another home for it. Right? Take the 10% and run. Avalanche. Okay. This is like the opposite. Hidden pivot analysis. It's sitting, hugging 20. So this goes back to your old equities thinking that you buy breakouts. Like something will break out and it'll just sit there. So if you see Avalanche closing above 20, 23 is the minimum and 29 is possible based on hidden pivot analysis. So the Avalanche price prediction is above 20 to 29. Polkadot, same thing, $6.58. Check out how it's just sitting on top of this hidden pivot line, right? 866 is possible. In other words, what happens if altcoins just run for a month or they run for two weeks? I mean, is it, is it, is it crazy to get bullish Polkadot? Polkadot hasn't even made a new high for this move yet. Neither has Avalanche. People are like, I missed it. I'm like, you missed what? I just got here. Started. AGIX, same type of thing, right? Sitting on top of 45 cents. If they really want to take this, this sort of sector higher, it could be 81 cents. Okay. I, I'm inclined to be skeptical a little, but don't doubt the uptrend in some of these things. Like when it's an object in motion and people demonstrate that they want it, even after profit taking, okay, things can go higher. ENJ, engine coin. Okay, breaking out above resistance at 48 cents. Possible target 70. Again, has not made a new high. What have you missed? Dollar, my favorite whipping boy. Wall Street Journal, Biden's federal budget blowout. The new congressional budget office forecast shows the deep fiscal hole that the administration has dug. Meanwhile, the dollar cannot get above the 23% retracement at 104. And I have no idea why anybody thinks it should. And that is the PowerPoint market update. Okay. Okay. So we got the president on the tape. Let's get to that. Say hello to some people on the stream. Okay. Biden says three UFOs shot down after spy balloon not related to the China program. Okay. Washington, the president told everybody that there was no 
evidence of the unidentified flying objects being Chinese spy balloons. Joe, Joe, we're, we're on to the next story about the train derailments. We're, we're done with UFOs. That was like weekend entertainment. Okay. I mean, seriously. Crypto clan likes the way I do TA. Appreciate that. Contempt wants to know if I'm going to be at ETH Denver. I wish. Bro, we are hammering away getting live content to you. Okay. Uh, wrong again is looking at micro strategy. So let's rock micro strategy. Okay. So micro strategy rushed up to fill a gap here. Okay. And it backed off. So my guess is the market's going to respect this resistance at this gap. Okay. And that perhaps, perhaps, okay. Bitcoin or Ethereum may be a better buy right this second than micro strategy. That said, if micro strategy does not back off, it's going to blow through here because look at this, you know, it's like, oh, gee, Bill, you know, what, what are we looking at? We're looking at some like little mini gap. Who cares? <laughs> you know, the next diagonal resistance in micro strategy is at 373. And that still keeps it in its range. I think this is the bigger the base, the higher in the space. And I think they did a false breakdown out of this range when everybody gave up. Okay. Robinson is here. Welcome. Okay. Okay. Sheb says when Dart started to move, Akala and Glimmer, right, will melt our faces. Like that. Okay. MDT by request. Okay, with all with the small altcoins that do these spikes, right? The question is, do they get spiked out? Right? Spike, spike, spike. And the question is, after they get done doing this, will it back off? Right here, it didn't back off. They just kept bringing it back up. So if you believe in this, it's not investment advice. And I have no idea what it is. If you believe in it, make the sellers force you out. Sellers are trying to hit it and it's not going anywhere. And a reminder from Guy D to hit the like button. Okay, let's get over to DeMarc. Undoubtedly, some seriously interesting stuff going on there. Okay, Bitcoin, 90-minute chart. DeMarc 13 top, nobody cared. Okay, there was resistance, which is now support at 24,729. ETH, 90-minute. Okay, so there's the 13 top. There's the blow off top to 1750. And now it's counting the other way. We're on a four. So just so you know what these numbers are, okay, the one through nine, the little numbers, it's like if the high is higher than the high two days ago, then we'll make a one. Something like that. It's complicated. DeMarc was the first quant technical analyst. So he breaks a trend up like, one through nine is the first part of the trend. And then, you know, one through 13 is the second part. It's not always perfect, but, you know, it works very well when you see nines and 13s. Nine means a pause or a top in a range. And the 13 means most likely a pause or an end in a trend. Now, on a 90 minute basis, it's not really working. DeMarc signals work when they don't work, and they work when they work. Eats not backing off here. If you go to a four hour chart, okay, there's no 13 yet. And it's above a DeMarc resistance point at 1681. And I'm not even sure where you can say resistance is on this four hour chart. I mean, what I, I, I can't, I don't have it right now. Everyone's like, oh my God, there's resistance at 1680. Oh my God, it's the, you know, it's, it's Helms deep. We'll never get through there. Whatever. Okay. Whatever.
Bitcoin, same thing, right? It's on an eight. I mean, you, you probably got at least one more day, at least one more day of up only, right? That solar storm does not create anxiety. Or actually, I didn't even think of this. Maybe the solar storm creates anxiety about not being long. Fear of missing out. Hedge funds, long stable coins. Guess what? Bitcoin and ETH. They're the new places to park money. And if you want altcoins, you're going to have to look and trade them versus Bitcoin and ETH. The SEC is forcing money out of stable coins. And every day there's going to be a new horde of fresh institutional buyers. And even if it goes up 2% every day, that's fine. That's how stocks would do it. Crypto bullseye is digging the DeMarc work. Welcome, sir. Right? Fuzz Crypto is looking for TA on Phantom. Okay, let's go with a Bitcoin daily. Just let's knock that out first. Okay, just in case everyone thinks this is over. Nine bottom yesterday was screaming buy, right? Now, this is the new high we were looking for. This will probably be a five-wave buying climax. Okay, I'm guessing 29,000. Some guys have 27. I'm good either way. Okay, let's go to other altcoins because I think you get the point. Okay, so Phantom, you know, possibly approaching a 13 top. Maybe you get a blow off. Maybe. Okay. I, I don't want to say, I don't want to say anything negative about this because there is nothing negative about it because it's way outside this base. In other words, because if you look at this, right? This was the base that this thing was traveling in. And there doesn't seem to be a huge reason why it would leave this range. Now, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's already done the target. Maybe. But it retested and there were buyers down here. I like taking profits in stuff that you had absurd gains in and reallocating them somewhere. Even if it's into Bitcoin. Now, maybe this explodes and goes to 90 cents because it could but that's wrong again it's like some some coins haven't even moved yet some coins haven't moved yet compound thirteen top stops it for two days starts to count the other way Something's coming back in DeFi. I just don't know what. I was thinking Ave. Like on a four-hour chart. I mean, this looks great. DeMarc 9 top. Pullback. Hammer candlestick. You got to watch out over the weekend, people. I'm telling you. Oh, the, the, the secret at the moment is to find stuff that has broken out that's perched on support. So Ave's got a lot of resistance at 91. Okay, so it's got a lot of resistance at 93 and people are running away from the resistance. The thing is about Ave, if it broke the resistance, then I mean, you're outside of at least the, the immediate range. So I can't fall too much in love with it, even though I would kind of like to. Okay. I, something in DeFi is coming back though. That is for sure. This Gensler staking thing, I mean, First, DeFi was the enemy. Then c is the enemy. Now it's going to be like DeFi. It's going to be like, hey, we have staking. It sounds like 2020, right? Okay. I think near $3 is possible. This DeMarc work is great. Web3, layer ones, rows. Okay. JP Stanley saying, yeah. You know, if you survive the bear market and you have capital, okay, rows, Possibly toppy. There's a nine and a 13 on the daily chart, the same as you had here. But again, it never really went down. See, that's the thing. You don't necessarily have to run away. I mean, this is a clear, this is a four hour chart of rows. There's a clear 13 top and people selling here. Okay. It's just a sector rotation game. 
just a sector rotation game. Hopefully I got the right symbol here for curve. Very similar, right? You have a four wave here and a five wave is likely to a dollar 35. Driftless says there is so much going on in DeFi. Gensler is a baboon. You know what? I think we should hit the like button for me, the market update and Driftless and everybody, everybody who comes into this chat. Welcome people who are here regularly. And if you're new, don't worry. You're not too late. You're not too early. You're right on time. Cha says, what does the crypto breakout mean for gold? Excellent question. Okay. Basically, it means gold's next. Okay. This is a handle. The one-year anniversary of the Ukraine war is coming up. And frankly, you have been paid to fade bearishness in gold. So this is gold monthly. This is a teacup. That's a handle. Okay. The upside target for this is 2,800. If you look at this on a daily chart, Thirty-eight percent retracement of the recent move up to the number. This is what Bitcoin looked like two days ago, three days ago. Long gold to buy water. GLDN pays you in a gold reward in form of Pax G, which appears to have survived the FUD storm. 38% retracement of gold. Boom, right there. The dollar is not going up. It's not. Okay, bullseye on the like button. We appreciate that. Big Rich with some emojis for Mr. Gensler. Okay, render. We've been charting this. Kind of knocking that one out of the park. Okay. So this speaks to the reallocation game, right? 13 top down, 13 top down. This is a 90 minute chart. However, I suspect these downdrafts are going to get smaller. Okay. So there's two 13 tops here in render. So I'm not opposed to taking profits here. Now that said, if, if this thing doesn't go down with these signals, forget about it. It's not going down, <laughs> right? I'm not opposed to bringing the register and stuff that has gone up a lot in favor of other altcoins. Not opposed to that. Okay. That said, if you're long and you want to stay long and strong, just stay long and strong. That's what the title of the thumbnail is all about today. Now, that doesn't mean don't play the sector rotation game because I think there's a lot of money in the sector rotation game. A lot of money, right? Yes, wrong again is PAX is a good company. They are going to fight, right? PAX Gold, you know, is, a, 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 is not under regulatory scrutiny and at emerging asset groups, you know, we don't, we don't have a corporate connection to them. We just use their token, okay? Bottom line is if you can get paid in gold, to buy water or invest in a water mechanism, a water pricing mechanism. You know what I'm saying? Like people don't get this and they don't have to get it. No one got Bitcoin. People spent 10,000 Bitcoin on a pizza. Okay. You're going to Starbucks every day for $4. Maybe we should put that, consider putting that in crypto. Okay, people, I got to go. Solana, ETH, right? Much higher than you think. Avalanche, 30. Bitcoin, 27. Want 100x ideas? Want 100x altcoins? Go to Twitter, crypto underscore noble, and listen to that Twitter space. Decide for yourself. Love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow.